Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, this is a Christian Prince with you, and today we have a new topic. Actually, today I schedule uh, for two broadcasts, and I hope I will be able to do both. Uh, for this one now, uh, I know not many, many people knows that I'm going to go live now, so there's a few people here, but it's fine. Uh, if you... Uh, one of you sent me a message in Facebook, sorry, in, uh, in Skype, uh, saying, if you please can talk about the miracles of uh, Prophet Muhammad for the Muslims making a big fuss about it or, you know, like speaking too much about miracles of Muhammad. So today we will speak about those what they claim to be miracles and we will have a nice discussion together and see if they are really true or not. However, please share the link with your friends. As I said, not, not many expect me to do a live podcast today. And uh, I schedule another one, which is going to speak about the temptation of Allah. It's going to be uh, around, uh, um, I think, 6, 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Germany time. And depend on your location, 6, 6.30. Uh, so please invite your friends and let us uh, discuss together uh, this this issue. You know, uh, every person, he assumes right away when we speak about religion, that a prophet who claimed to be a prophet, he should be sponsored with uh, kind of, you know, proofs that he is a prophet. Now, Muhammad have none of those miracles, and we are going to prove it very easy. Uh, and as usual, we will not use any source to prove Muhammad not to be uh, a prophet or not to have miracles we will use only Islamic resource only you know we will not use the Bible we will not use uh, Hindu books Buddha books uh, you know we will not use we will use only Islamic source and you will see from their source that Muhammad has no prophecy or no miracles uh, I search in the internet you know, like just type in Google, uh, Miracles of a Prophet Muhammad, and I found this website. Miracles of the Prophet, of Prophet Muhammad. And then you go down and you will see, it's written by Abu Ibrahim, the father of Ibrahim. Muslims believe that God has sent many prophets throughout history to guide humanity. Hmm? That's weird. Because according to Islam, Allah, he sent many prophets and none of them was able to guide anyone and their books is gone. So, and you ask the Muslims why the books of those prophets are gone, they will say because Allah was not interested to protect his books. <laughs> so you send prophets to guide or to misguide because, you know, if you allow people to corrupt your book, you are giving another tool for the devil, if you are not a devil, I mean Allah, if he is not the devil, he is given a more powerful tool to deceive people. So why you are doing that? It's better not to send a prophet and not to send a book unless you are going to protect the words is going to be delivered by the prophet so nobody can play around with it. But the Muslims, they believe strongly that 124,000 prophets was sent by Allah and none of them, his books is reserved except the book of Quran and then if we examine the Quran, we will find in less than five minutes that the whole Quran is gone and what is left today is not even the Quran. However, if you read the articles of Muslims, you will see how funny it is. They taught people about pure greed of belief in one, in the one God. And you know, always the Muslims, they make a big title about one God. We worship one God. You know, I, I, I find it the most silly, stupid thing even to be proud about worshiping one God. Let us say somebody he worshiped 10 gods and you worship one God. So are you saying you are better than him? No, you are not. Because if there is 10 gods, then is he, he, he is the true and you are not. You are false. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting my point. Let us say there is somebody who believe in, in there is one billion God, not one God. And then we find out that there is one billion God. So what the point of saying one God? The point is, if it is true or not, who care about the numbers? And then if we examine the Quran, we will find that Allah himself and the Quran says that he have people of his kind. Allah is not a unique, you know, like 
he says none like Allah this is a verse he copied from from the Old Testament that nothing like God but in the same time if you go in the Quran you will find Muhammad saying which supposedly Allah talking saying that if Allah want to take a wife or a girlfriend he will take from his kind you know how you can how you have a kind you know if you are unique if you are the only true God if you are no one like you how you see from ourself how you say you will take a partner from yourself I mean this is impossible because to take a partner it's possible and then from ourself that is impossible unless you are many if you go here let us see لو أردنا أن نتخذ لهوا لاتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين. The word لهو is a word mean women, which mean mean fun. You know the Arab they always insult women in the time of Muhammad to the point Muhammad himself he like it and he call women fun. You know and this is a sign of disrespect because women should be called by their names, not what they present to you. So you did not see in the women anything except the fun. Are we talking about a hooker, a prostitute, a stripper? So this is how the Quran present women. So the women are lehwan. If we wanted to take a partner, which is a woman, lehwan for fun, we will take from ladunna, from our kind, from our kind, from our bloodline. So how Allah is the only one and no one like him and there's no, none like him and none... He don't have a family, he don't have parents, he don't have sons, he don't have a children. And then he says such a silly, stupid thing. And what do you mean if you want to take a partner? I mean, I thought Muslims, they say Allah have no partners. Yes, they say that. They say actually here, he's saying he don't have a partner. He said, but if he like to have a partner, I mean, this is even more silly. How you are even giving me the possibility that you might have a partner if you wish. Which means the possibility is exist but he don't feel like doing it that's all what the verse is saying and you know what just to show you that we are not making things up this is a chapter 21 verse number 17 we can go and see the interpretation 21 17 let us do that because you know the muslim they will say it doesn't say that it doesn't mean that you are lying you know you know that you know the abdul Please uh, post the link around with your friends in Facebook, Twitter, etc., so we can get more people here. No, none knows expecting me to do live broadcast now. But finally, I get like a quiet uh, uh, time uh, because there's a lot of people around me, and all of them they are really loving, good people. But uh, you know, in order to do live broadcast, you have you have to have some privacy. Uh, even though all of them they knew really what I do and they support what I do, but you need some quiet time. Had we desired to find some diversion, that which provide diversion in the way of a partner or a child, we would have found it with ourselves from among the beautiful eyed Huris or the angels. Like, who, look, look at this from ourselves. Do you see it, guys? Th this is the Muslim Abdul translation, which always is based in deception, trying to defend Islam. How Allah will find our a partner from ourselves. Explain that to me. So we worship the only true one God, but Allah, the true God, he says, if I want to take a girlfriend, we will take it from ourselves. If Allah only is one God and he will take a partner from ourselves, the only way I can accept that is the same as shaitan, according to Muslims, he lay eggs by having sex with himself. According to Muslims, when the Quran says, Are you going to take him and his offspring as uh, 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 protectors and uh, friends? And that was for the shaitan. So they ask how shaitan can have offspring. Muhammad, the genius, he come with the idea, and the Muslims after him, that shaitan have a penis in the right thigh of his leg, and he have a vagina in the left thigh of his leg. So when he want to have sex, he just shake his legs, and this go, and if that, Excuse my language. I'm just saying to you what it says. And now Allah is saying that if I want to take a partner, I will take it from ourself. 
and he continues saying who are they those ourselves and the, the Muslim here they will say to you oh hold, hold on hold on this is the interpretation you know you Muslims are really a bunch of crazy if we give interpretation by ourselves you say you have no right if we show you your scholars which you accept them to be official scholars to explain the Quran to you which you learn the Quran meaning from them you say to them he is a scholar this is not Allah no Allah is saying that it says in Arabic it's exactly what it says found it with ourselves this is not even interpretation yet this is a translation for this is what says in Arabic and then Allah he continues saying supposedly from among the beautiful eyed Huris okay hold on you ask the Muslims is the Huris are they they have a flesh of a human and they, are, they have a shape of a human and your Muslims will have sex with them they will say yes okay how Allah will take a partner with a human if he is not a human I mean what is it stupid to say I'm going to marry a machine as an example is it stupid to say I'm going to marry a tree in order to have you here we are talking about the women for sex in order to have a children's from her so if Allah is not a man how God have sex with a woman are you guys getting my point if there's anyone is not not understanding what I'm saying if I am from different nature you see I can understand that a horse can have sex with donkey and then they can get a mule now the mule Muhammad he come to us with ideas nobody can understand because this is stupid how God will have sex with the beautiful eyed Huri when the beautiful eyed Huri is a female woman who have a flesh of a human the only difference is she is so white and she is a transparent like a jellyfish which is very ugly and disgusting imagine you have a wife you can see the shit in her belly excuse my language sometime I have to say it as it is to show you how silly this idea is imagine your wife she just ate a hamburger and you see the hamburger moving in her stomach I mean that's that's crazy you know the only benefit of this is you know like uh, it's easier to find diseases and problems and even you can see through their bones but anyway this is our topic so here we we find uh, you know uh, uh, this stupid statement saved by Allah that he if you want to take a partner he will take it from ourselves that's mean there is from ourselves people who they are equal to Allah to be partner because God will not partner with someone is not equal you see partnership cannot be happen between you know no one and someone very important partnership is about you know like a, a, a group or one or you know like one uh, uh, go join a group or two or you know or one plus one like two at least they are equal to be in partner if I say this guy is my partner it's mean we are equal in the ownership and here we are talking about ownership of what partner of what ownership of the universe the galaxies the power how Allah can be partner with a woman and he is calling this woman ourselves and then he continues saying or angels and then he says but we do not do so because we never desire it this is even more stupid because you do it you don't do it it doesn't matter you just gave us that you are you are fit for such a partnership and it is an option but it, all what you need is a desire the partner is exist you are exist all what we need is agreement of partnership it's possible but uh, i don't feel like doing it this is what it says but this is mean that islam destroyed already by one verse for allah cannot be one and again the jews believe god is one the christian believe that god is one the old Egyptian believe God is one. So what? I mean, this is stupid. I mean, uh, th those who worship Satan, they believe God is Satan and he's one. So that would not make them following any good religion. So Islam is very easy to destroy and to break into pieces and nobody can glue it back. All what you need is just knowledge and connecting the information together and you will see how easy to make Islam in this ability. Now we go back to the article. Ways to worship him. 
how to lead righteousness lives keeping on mind our purpose in life I guess just go in the news right now and see how many people killed in the name of Allah just in the last 24 hours I mean the purpose of life in Muslims for Muslims is what we can go right now in the Quran and we examine the purpose of life the purpose of life for a Muslim is to kill everybody who don't believe in Islam as simple as that what purpose of life what is the purpose of life in Muslims to worship Allah and kill his enemies so they try to present to you Islam in a nice like you know if you uh, if you remember my debate with the with the head of the Shia uh, Sheikh uh, Hisham al Husseini from Michigan he's an Iraqi Sheikh uh, uh, and he is the consultant of George Bush the time of George Bush what an idiot George Bush to hire him give him a big salary uh, in the beginning of my debate he was saying we are friends and we are brothers and sisters and now you know me myself i visit the christians and in iraq we are neighbors i all the garbage you know after i start asking him questions about islam he threatened me and not only that he says time will come and we will enter jerusalem and we will cleanse you know what cleanse means we will kill you all we will cleanse people like you the zionist the second you say the truth the muslims accuse you to be a zionist you are a jew in the best scenario you are a hindu so they have faces the muslims are people of faces they have articles speaking of nothing truth and always they're presenting things to you in a way which is not truthful so what is our you know we can go right now the quran and the hadith if we go like in a second i'm not going to take a long so we can go back to our topic if we go back here in the hadith you will see the hadith saying The purpose of life for a Muslim, the best Muslims, not only the purpose of life, this is the first, the purpose of life for the best of the Muslims, which means a true Muslim. The rest, if they are not doing this purpose, they are fake Muslims. Read with me carefully. You are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit of mankind. Chapter 3, verse 110. The Muslims they say, oh, the Bible says that the Jews they think they are the favorite people of God. You know, you, you copy the same thing, you put it in your in your in your Quran, but in an ugly way. And now Muslims are the best of mankind to do what exactly? And look here between two bracket, the Abdul he put it in two bracket because simply it is not there the benefit. The word benefit is not there. This is a fabrication of the translator. However, let us go with it. The benefit of mankind when you see the word benefit of mankind you think man those Muslims are going to be the benefit of mankind and they will be very peaceful loving la 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 but then it says the best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam and thereby save them from the eternal punishment of the hellfire and make them enter Jannah hereafter so the Muslim duty is to go in war with you either he you die in the war with him killing you or he bring you like a dog put a leech around your head around your neck and he forced you to, to to convert to islam and by this he is saving you from hellfire so when you read an article saying the benefit i mean what is the purpose of a life for a muslim yes what the purpose of love muslim go and see in the mosque what they pray Cursing the Jews, cursing the Christians, cursing the Hindus, cursing the atheists, cursing, cursing, cursing everybody. That is the purpose. Your prayer, my friend, your prayer, present to us the purpose of your religion. And your prayer is evil. The Muslims, he pray five times a day. First thing in the morning, he say, Allah, please, please don't make us the same as the lost Christians and the cursed Jews. Just say good morning first. And the funny, they say to us, that you have an Islamophobia. It's the Muslims have a phobia. Cannot you start your day without cursing us? Then we go back. Let us go down. Avoid this garbage, garbage here speech to see the miracles of the Quran or Muhammad. Look, look at this. Look at this. Uh, 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 the madness of the Muslims when they say the miracles. What is the title of the article? What is the title? miracles of a prophet muhammad so supposedly everything we will see here is a miracle of muhammad but look what happened here they start saying 
splitting the moon well is that a miracle of Muhammad why did Muhammad say the moon is split hey, moon is split and the moon is split to make it simple imagine I was exist in the time of Moses and the sea split and I witnessed that is that make it my miracle <laughs> Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? I hope my funny English is uh, is uh, clear for you. By the way, the Muslims, they don't have anything to say to me except, a Christian prince, your English is funny. I mean, okay. They speak to you, they say to you, you don't know Arabic. So what we would do now, if you want to debate them about Islam, they say, oh, you do not know Arabic. If you do not know Arabic, you're going to talk about it. Okay, I, I am an Arab. My Arabic is my first language. And I speak Arabic. So what? What the problem now? Your English is funny. Zakir Naik, he have no English for funny English. Brother, you know that, that you open your umbrella. So here we will find something very funny and very silly. And this is telling us that Muslims not only fabricate stories, they are pointing their fingers at things Muhammad have nothing to do with it. Why? Because even the Quran says the moon is split. The Quran did not say Allah split the moon. Let us assume for the sake of argument that the moon is split, which is absolutely funny, stu stupid story. Muhammad, he was terrified when he saw the eclipse of the moon. The guy, you can go and search in the hadith and you will see, just type the word eclipse and you will see how Muhammad act like a crazy each time he see the eclipse. For he think that this is the ju judgment day. He terrified the people and he scared them in order to make them believe in him, that he's a prophet. If we go in the Quran, let us see the story of the moon splitting. Which is a poetry Muhammad he took from Imr al Qais. If you have my second book, uh, uh, Quran and Science, or if you have it in German, you know it's it's right now available in German. You can get it from uh, uh, Amazon.de. Uh, if you got my books, you will see uh, the origin of this poetry. This is a this is a section of a poetry made by a guy. His in his name Imr al Qais, and it was a woman he saw in the mid in the in the, in the night time. He says the judgment day and the moon, you know, split. As simple as that. Muhammad he took it. He changed one word in the in the uh, in the line, and here he said. Let us read the Muslim translation. Chapter 54, verse number 1. The hour is night and the moon, a cliff ascender. Where is the miracle of Muhammad? <laughs> I mean, you see, intelligence, intelligence is a gift from God. Do you Muslims have inter it look like the second you follow Islam you became a fool even the verse itself says nothing about a miracle or what it says that the stupid Muhammad he said the judgment day is near very near and the moon split he is reporting what he saw so where is the miracle same time Muhammad here he provides us with a false prophecy because the word iqtarabat iqtarabat is not near the word iqtarabat is like it's here this this is like when he is speaking about the moon uh, split ascender that he is saying the, the judgment day started what what the purpose of splitting the moon then he said clearly what is the purpose it is judgment day sign it's not, a, it's not about making you believe in a miracle, no. He said in the verse, what is the purpose of the moon splitting? It is the judgment day. So Muhammad, he saw the eclipse. He, he thought that this is judgment day and blah, 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 blah. But all of us, we knew. And the Muslim, they pose for you a picture from NASA for a valley in the moon. And they say, see, this is the crack. My friend, it says a split. You know what split means? Split became two pieces. And the Quran never said it came back together. And if the moon is split to pieces, the moon will be destroyed in a second. 
and most likely the earth will be destroyed because one part of the moon is going to hit is going to be grabbed by the earth and maybe the other part will be grabbed by the sun so the moon will disappear the earth will be destroyed it's a stupid statement from a stupid prophet who, who, who have no idea what is happening. Same time, how you can make it a miracle if it's providing a false statement, false prophecy. If I say to you now, let us say we have eclipse and I say to you, you know, by the way, there's many Christians who they are false they have false teaching I'm not saying they are false they have false teaching because they've been deceived you know like uh, people they keep saying to them like you know uh, oh uh, if you remember like uh, just two months ago uh, the number etc and they start calculating and the judgment day and the and, and the bloody moon and, and all this garbage you know so they take verses from the Bible they make it sound like something they want you to believe and then they say to you this is what's happening and then what happened those people they serve the devil why because when you believe in them and those things never happen then you will lose your faith and this is the whole purpose of the devil trying to de deceive you god will not tell us when it's going to happen and the muslim they say to us oh jesus do not know even when the, the judgment day is, is going to come jesus never said that if you read the same page the same page your muslims they quote from you will see jesus tell us exactly how it's going to happen when that is very simple not to be told because God will not tell any man about when for he will come the same as a thief as the Bible described So people will not be prepared only the believers will be prepared if God gave you a date for the judgment day Everybody will repent an hour before or five minutes before The porn stars the, the drug dealers the child molesters everybody So there is a wisdom behind not to tell when the judgment day but Muhammad here he just announced the judgment day So this is a false statement and the Quran are proving it to be false. How? If we go in the Quran, you will see Allah saying that Muhammad have no miracles. And not only this, he will never have a miracle. Read carefully with me. وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ Okay, what is that? Never anything made us refrain from sending miracles except that former generations refused to believe in them, which is absolutely false. It's a false excuse from a false prophet. Chapter 17, verse number 59. Read me carefully. And this is the Muslim translation. And we refrain from sending the signs only because the man of a former generation treated them as false that's absolutely garbage but the important for us that allah he announced that he refrained from sending miracles when in the time of muhammad so how the muslim they say to us muhammad had miracles that's mean they are accusing their god to be a stupid god who announced loud and clear that he refrained from sending miracles if you read carefully with me and then allah he sent he said to us we sent to the she camel to the tamud to open their eyes but they treated her wrongly i mean look at this stupid silly story it's a legion uh, the arab believe that uh, some people they ask a prophet who is a pagan prophet to bring them a sign from his God and they told him can you make this rock deliver a camel and she is a breadnet with 10 month camel what what the rock I mean look look at look look at the the funny what what kind of request this request is and look how funny Allah he made their request happen a rock giving a, a birth to a camel or the rock became a camel but yet in the case of Muhammad Allah refrained okay what about the miracles of Jesus who is Thamud those people are not exist according to the Quran Allah destroyed them all so what is the excuse of saying 
that people of the mood did not believe in it okay well what about the Christians Christians believe all of them in the miracle of Jesus the Jews believe in the miracles of all the prophets who they are exist in the Torah the Messianic Jews they believe in the miracle of Jesus and the miracle of the Torah so it is a big fat lie and we are the majority in this world you know Christianity is the biggest and the fastest growing faith ever in history few months ago I was in China and I could not believe it how China is transforming so fast to a Christian country to the point the government of China do not know what to do with it China in less than 20 years is not going to be a communist country is going to be a Christian country so where is the people who did not believe in the miracles if you are the same God of the God of the Christians as the Muslims claim and why in the time of Muhammad God of Islam refrain I mean that's it now you refrain, make uh, one, two, three miracles. I mean, come on. Especially the Quran says, if you remember the story uh, of Cain and Abel, the story of uh, uh, Qayyin and Habil, uh, in that story, Okay, so here Allah is saying to Muhammad, tell them the story, tell them the stories of the children of Adam. Okay, what happened? If you see in the children of Adam story, you will see how Allah He give you a sign. This is the first human being, Allah. According to Muslims, he, he taught all the believers how he can tell you if this is accepted or rejected, which means even a prophet, how he is accepted or rejected. So you make an offering. If we go in the Quran here, let us go to the verse so you can see the reference from this English, German, whatever translation. In chapter 5 verse number 27 if we go and see uh, again guys as you see I don't make my own interpretation for the verses so Muslim will not say oh he's making you false interpretation we don't do that this is what the Muslims do chapter 5 verse number 27 we go to the interpretation website All right. Tafsir al-Jalalain. And recite to them, O Muhammad, to the people, the story and the tale of the two sons of Adam, Abel and Cain. Truthfully, Bilhaq, which means truthfully, Bilhaq, is, you know, so here he is telling them, okay, tell them the story. Okay, what the story? Let's see. How they each each one of them offered a sacrifice to God which is in the <laughs> in the case of Abel was a ram and the case of Cain's uh, was some green crops and it was accepted from one of them namely Abel when the fire came down from heaven and uh, uh, consumed his offering and not accepting from the other okay so now what we learn from this what we learn from the Quran that if you let us say me and you we have an argument and the story here by the way about Cain and Abel is in case you do not know according to those stupid Muslims I uh, sorry I have to use the stupid Muslims I mean how you can believe in this garbage according to Abdul Cain uh, and Abel each one of them when his mother she gave birth to them they are a twin but a twin one boy and one girl and Adam according to the story he used to marry the female of this twin to the female to the male of the other twin so like it's a change 
and they don't know what the purpose I mean still at the end of the day they are sisters and brothers I mean pff, twin or not a twin who care but supposedly it's haram haram and look how silly it is and then uh, uh, when able uh, 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 you know uh, he have a sister and Keen he have a sister but Keen he did not like to marry the uh, his uh, the, the sister of cable which means the twin of uh, of able because she have a cross eye and look how silly stupid this is story then they have a fight over which sister each one of them would have the one with the cross eye or with the one with the fine eyes then Allah inspire Adam to tell his children to provide an a, a, a qurban which mean a, a sacrifice and you see here the sacrifice the funny the Muslim they say that Sacrifice uh, so many articles, you know, it's, it's a pagan practice. Christianity practice paganism. Look at you. According to Islam, the first man exists in this earth. Allah told him to do sacrifice, not Abraham. And the sacrifice is to prove who Allah, who he accept who. As you see here is a sign of acceptance like you know okay you make a sacrifice and you make a sacrifice and the one I approve I take his sacrifice the one I disapprove I reject his sacrifice and look what happened here Abel he did give a ram as you see it was a ram which mean a bloodshed in the case of Cain's he was obviously vegetarian so he provide Allah some zucchini and cucumber and uh, obviously it was not accepted but how the acceptance happened Allah he sent the fire from the sky for you know it, it, it was accepted from one of them namely from Abel when a fire came down from the heaven and consumed his offering okay so how allah proved to us supposedly that he accepts something by sending a fire consuming the offering of the person who give it not someone else so let us say i want to show you that i'm a prophet of god you say to me okay do because this is how allah he wanted make an offering and if god send the fire from heaven consume what you provided that's mean you are sent by god as simple as that that's what the verse is saying if you go in the quran you will see the funny muhammad by making such a statement telling such a story he put himself in the corner in chapter 3 verse 183 الذين قالوا إن الله عيد عهد إلينا ألا نؤمن لرسول حتى يأتينا بقربان تأكله قل قد جاءكم رسول من قبل بالبينات وإتسا تريد سري. Those who say and those are supposed to be the Jews. Chapter three, verse number eighty-three. They said. Allah took our promise not to believe in any messenger, in any messenger, unless he showed us a sacrifice consumed by fire from heaven. Now, did those people do wrong? No, I just showed you that this is Allah's choice. This is how he made it to Cain and Abel's since the time of Noah. And here they are saying, okay, well, we have no problem to accept you as a messenger, but yet, you have to do provide us with the clear evidence which Allah Himself agree with. What is the clear what, what is the clear evidence? We showed you the story of Cory Queen of and Abel. So look what Muhammad said to them. Allah said to Muhammad, say, There come to you messenger before me with the clear signs, and even with that you ask for like what the heck? <laughs> And then Muhammad continued doing poo, poo Then why did ye slay them if you if he if ye speak the truth? Like what the hell? What's what's wrong with this guy? He just admitted that the one they are asking for 
is agreed by Allah because Allah himself he sent those by signs including the one you are asking for which one which which mean you make an offer offering and God he sent the fire to consume it if he if if he does then you are a prophet of God what Muhammad he said yes yes Allah you know yes Allah he sent miracles like those and even the one you asked for like with me the fire but so why you killed the prophet before me what this is not the topic now and I challenged the Muslim to tell me and count for me the names of the prophet the Jews they slay I mean how, how stupid Muhammad is to say such a statement any Muslim can show me one prophet he was being killed by the Jews you Muslim you claim that Jesus was not killed who is else then that's it anyone else The book of fiction, the Quran, have time to tell me about the story of an ant warning the ants that if you don't hide, the army of Suleiman is going to crush you. And now you are telling me that the Jews they slaughter prophets and you don't mention it. If we read the whole Quran, where we can find the story of a prophet of God was slaughtered by the Jews? Who's that? Yes, do you understand what I'm saying? So in this verse, it confirmed that it is a sign required by Allah that if somebody claimed to be something, to be a messenger, he have to give an offering and then Allah, he sent a fire to consume the offering. The, the the offering of this uh, prophet or self-acclaimed prophet if if the fire did not come that's mean he is a false prophet so muhammad he agreed okay yes allah he said that okay but uh why you killed the prophet what does this have to do with this and who are the prophet who been killed if this is allah what he required to approve because anyone can claim to be a prophet so how we will know it's you in the time of Muhammad, according to Muslims, there was at least eight to nine people who claimed to be prophets. One of them is very famous. He, you know, the Muslim they call him Musaylama, and his wife she claimed to be a prophet too. It's a it's a it's a great business to claim a prophet in that time of at that time, and actually any time now. If you claim to be a prophet and you get some stupid idiot believing you, you will make a lot of money. You will have a good life. When you agree that this is the way to prove that you are a prophet, so what the problem? Can't Allah do a simple thing? Put a chicken for him in the table and say, Allah, if you, I am a prophet, send the, your fire to consume it. People, they will see it. And people will say, okay, here we go. See, we prove to you. What do you want more? Always Muhammad, when they ask him for a miracle, he ran away. So what is written in this article? I have no idea where they came from. What this is about? Splitting the moon. The moon was not split. And it's not even reporting that Muhammad split the moon or even Allah. It was a sign of judgment day. Isra and Mi'raj. What Isra and Mi'raj? Muhammad he went to the 7-Eleven heaven in the top of a flying mule. And his wife, she said, he went in his dream. He went in a dream how we can call this is a miracle if there's no witnesses for a miracle who saw muhammad go into the 7 11 heaven which is the story the most amazing stupid story god sending a mule to carry him and this mule is white wearing a bracelet and very sexy which is that so they are counting for us miracles they are very funny. Read this one. Food. Once one, uh, 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 once one of Muhammad's companions invited him to have, and a few others to meal that could feed a smaller group. The prophet accepted the invitation, and to the host, uh, the snake uh, called a thousands of his companions to join him in the meal. What? Look how silly the story. A guy he invited Muhammad for a meal and he invited thousands. Like I'm quoting, huh? 
thousands okay why you invite thousand if you cannot feed them okay hold on yet Muhammad personally served all of them from a small dish until one eat his fill anyone notice what's happening here the Muslims are trying to copy a miracle done by Jesus feeding thousands of people claiming Muhammad he did the same but where we can find this in the Quran in, okay I have a question to the Abdul why the same miracle exists in the Quran speaking about Jesus doing it and the Quran never mentioned the same miracle of Muhammad to make it simple the Quran speak about the same miracle but done by Jesus وإذا قال الحواريون يا عيسى ابن مريم هل يستطيع ربك أن ينزل علينا مائدة من السماء قال اتقوا الله إن كنتم مؤمنين okay what this verse speaking of chapter 5 verse 112 actually even the chapter is called the chapter of the table the chapter of the feast you know he, he, the feast sorry the chapter of the feast which means he gave them a feast he feed them why this miracle amazing miracle is not mentioned in the Quran when it's come to Muhammad is it important to mention a miracle done by Jesus 600 years ago about feeding a couple of thousands of people but it's not important to mention the same exact miracle done by Muhammad people do you understand what I'm saying why we cannot find this miracle in the Quran? And the answer is very simple. This is a false fiction story written long after Muhammad. Trying to copy the life of Jesus. The same story here. And by the way, if you if you if you read the story interpretation, you will see that Jesus, Allah, He sent him five whales in five sandwiches. Five whales in five sandwiches. All my life, I wanted to eat a sandwich of whale. Big, huge whale. Thousands of kilograms. Some stories, they say seven sandwiches. And you can find that in the interpretation, by the way. So, why Allah did not mention the same story, the same miracle of Muhammad in the Quran? The miracle of Jesus, which is the same exact miracle of Muhammad, is mentioned in the Quran, but the miracle of Muhammad, who is the most important prophet for the moment, because now this is the book of Muhammad. This is a book is made to make us believe in Muhammad. And yet you are mentioning to me a story about a person who exists 600 years before, before Muhammad, and you don't mention the same miracle done by the same prophet? The only answer for that, that this is a fabrication added long after to the hadith and there is no roots of it otherwise it should be in the Quran especially we see that the Quran mentioning the same story about Jesus if we go here Jesus, son of Mary, said, O God, our Lord, send down upon us a table from heaven that it shall be that a day of its standing down shall be celebration for us, which is your brother. Okay. okay. So Jesus says, send the table. Allah send the table. Muhammad, he made the same miracle according to the Abdul. We cannot find it in the Quran. Why? Obviously, it's a story. Muslims trying to copy it from the Bible, claiming that Muhammad he can do the same as Jesus. But we just showed you the Quran says it clearly: Muhammad, Allah is God. He refrained from sending miracles. If you go in the Quran and you search for the word miracle, you will find tons of verses in the Quran that people they keep asking Muhammad for a proof by a miracle, and he have. 
No proof. All those verses in front of us speak of that. Chapter 6, verse number 37. You can read any translation, by the way. I'm not picking on just Yusuf Ali is the most popular, but all of them, they are a bunch of liars when they translate. Read with me, please. Chapter 6, verse number 37. They said, why has not Protent been sent down upon him from his Lord. Say, Lu, Allah has able to send down a miracle, but most of them know not. Know not. I mean, what the point of this be? They are asking you to send a miracle. Why his God, if he is a prophet, why his God don't send a miracle? Allah says, okay, hold on, you know. Uh, Lu, Allah, able to send down. He's able? Is that really what they are looking for? What is the proof? And most of them do not know that he is able. This is not the question. This is a stupid excuse. And then Muhammad he continued to explain to them why Allah is not sending miracles. He said, There is not an animal on earth, nor a flying creature uh, 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 flying on two wings, but they are people like you. What? <laughs> yeah, and Allah, He gave them the Quran. And they got the Quran and they did not neglect anything. What does that mean? I mean, what how stupid this statement is. People, they are asking me for a miracle. I say to them, all the cockroaches are people like you. Brother Titter, Tom of the Alab, the Alti Prophet Muhammad, they said to him, Okay, if you are a truly prophet, how come you don't have a miracle from Allah? He said, Allah told me to tell you that there is many communities, they are cockroaches, they are people like you cockroaches, fleas, cucumber, every creature in this earth. They are people like you, and they worship Allah, and they were never declared the book. What does this have to do with this? People are asking you for a miracle. You tell me that pigs are people like me and cockroaches people like you and cats and dogs are people. What does this have to do with the topic? Muhammad, in, like in those uh, uh, scams you see today when they lie about, about any question you, answer, you ask them, it's the same. Ask any Muslim who claim to be a scholar, but none of them even knows how to even to read two words in the Quran. Why Muhammad is doing this? They give you one hour answer, but the answer does not include answer for the question. They speak about everything except the topic, and this is exactly. They are saying, why Allah don't send him a miracle? You say to them, Allah is able. And then you say to them, cockroaches are people like you? Chickens, are buck, 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 buck. They, are, they are people like you? And not only that, they did not, and they will gather in the judgment day. Imagine Allah will judge between two chickens. Actually, there's a hadith where Muhammad, he claimed that Allah will judge in the judgment day between two goats. Two goats. How you can judge between two goats? One have a horn and the other one does not have a horn. You know, once I, I ask a Muslim, is Allah is going to judge the mosquitoes for uh, drinking my blood? He said, yes. What? And you know, if you think about it, you will think that those Muslims are very spiritual and peaceful. They drink literally blood of people in the war. Actually, there's a book taught right now as we speak in the Lazar University about how to eat an ex-Muslim and how to eat a kafir. That one of them you can cook and the other one is lawful for you to eat him raw without cooking.
all the Quran, tons of verses are speaking of one thing that Muhammad has no miracles. وَيَقُولُونَ لَوْ أَنْزِلَ أُنْزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ and look how funny this verse here. I find this verse is the most funny one between all the verses speaking about Muhammad. Why Muhammad don't have a miracle? Look, look what Allah said. Supposedly Allah talking, not Muhammad. Take a note. Chapter 10, verse number 20. And they say, not will say, stupid translation. If only a miracle were sent down upon him from his Lord, then say, O oh Muhammad, the unseen belong to Allah. So wait, Lu, I am waiting with you. <laughs> uh, guys, wait, wait. A miracle is coming, okay? And I'm waiting with you. Allah saying that? Allah saying to Muhammad to tell them, wait, and I am waiting with you? Wait for what? For the miracle. Okay, why you don't do it? What are you waiting for? And this is a total contradiction for the other verse where it says that Allah he refrained from sending miracles. How you say in one verse that you are refraining from sending miracles, and the other verse you say to them, wait, it's coming. It's in the shipping. The shipping is late. Which one of them is the one we should believe? The one that says we refrain from sending miracles. And you say, when you say we refrain, that means that's it. We made a decision. That's it. And we gave you the reason. So how you say here we refrain and the other one you say, oh, wait, I'm waiting with you. What a stupid cult. So, you know, always when, when a Muslim, he speak about his cult, Take into consideration that the Abdul himself, who is speaking, making an article, is an idiot who do not know what he's talking about. For Muslims, always when they write about the religion, they say to you, Allah knows best, because nobody knows what Islam is about. It's a shish kebab, falafel, hummus, shawarma, you, but it's an ugly, ugly food. Like, I, I wish it was shawarma. At least it's, it, it is the delicious. I wish it was hummus. At least it's, it's food. It's good food. So wait, and I am waiting with you. Now we go to the article back. So we do, because we don't want to miss any miracle, water. A miracle of water? What is that? When Muhammad and his companion were once traveling, their water supply ran out, according to one of their companions. The prophet had a small container of water, which he put in his hand, and the water started sporting, sporting out between his fingers like a spring look at this okay i want to believe in this miracle abdul where we can find it in the quran and if it is not there why why the miracle of the of the camel of a prophet we never heard of is in the quran why suleiman speaking or listening to the ants is there why suleiman he have a minister who is a bird looking for women have hair, no legs is there. Why the story of the magical ring, the seven sleepers, all the silly stuff is there. But such an amazing miracle, the same as the previous miracle, the same as the previous miracle, the same as the previous miracle is not in the Quran. Why such an amazing thing is not in the Quran? Allah have time to count for us. Miracles we never heard of about prophets we never heard of too. But he have no time to write it in the Quran to tell us. Imagine Muhammad, such a thing happened to him. That's amazing, astonishing. A person he have little water in between his hand and thousands, thousands of people. And look here. Anyhow, we wear. 1500 we were what 1500 people they drunk from little water between the hand of muhammad 
and such an amazing miracle is not in the Quran. The answer is very simple for it is a fiction, it is a lie. Healing the, the sick, Muhammad, he healed the sick. <laughs> Do you remember, guys, the story of a guy, his brother, he had a problem with his, his, his sick. Muhammad, he ordered him to drink honey. And when Muhammad, he ordered him to drink honey, the guy, he came after one day, two days, three days, four days. And each time he said to him, my brother is getting worse, getting worse, getting worse. And then Muhammad, he screamed at him to, to the point he scared the hell of him. I said, okay, are you going to kill me? He said, he said to him literally that, you know, you're a prof, your brother, stomach is telling a lie and the prophet he told and Allah sorry and Allah told the truth the guy is dying and then the Muslim they said and the guy never came back because his brother was healed Muhammad he healed Muhammad he died and he could not heal himself if we go here we will find That Muhammad he died in a pain, very powerful pain, which caused by a poison. The Prophet, in his element, which in which he died, used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my orta is being cut off from that poison. The funny, the hadith report that Muhammad he asked uh, asked the woman, "Why you did that to me?" She said, according to Muslims, that she said to herself, "Okay, if he is a prophet of God, Allah will save him. If he is not," He will die. According to Muslims, that when Muhammad he ate from the goat before he started, the goat which is cooked spoke to Muhammad, says, Don't eat me, I'm poisoned. <laughs> and obviously, that is a lie because many reports report that Muhammad, when he ate from the poison, a guy who was there who is very well known, like let us say, a tribal uh, medicine he made an injury in his neck in order to make him bleed from where the poison go through which is a throat and he made him bleed and then they wrap it with the fabric to stop the bleeding in order to get rid of the poison but obviously it did not work and here we go as you see Muhammad he died and his orta is cutting off as he claimed as the Muslims going to claim that Muhammad is lying here this is not how he died. Are you going to say that your prophet is being a liar? Or you will say he thought. Remember, if you say he thought, that means all the medicine Muhammad he claimed is given, and he claimed that it is coming, a knowledge coming to him from Allah, proving that his knowledge is false, because here, his knowledge is coming from where? That he's dying by poison. And look what it says here. It says he used to say, used to say, it's not like one time. So he consistent repeating that this is how he is dying. He is in pain, very horrible pain, and he died by poison. So I will say to me, Muhammad, he healed, but he cannot heal himself. When they say to Jesus, okay, you are the son of God. Okay, here we go. You are in the cross. Help yourself. Christ, after they killed him, he came back from death. Help yourself? Sure. Okay. Huh? Okay, we will kill you. Muhammad, he died, and nobody healed him. How he can heal others, but he cannot himself heal himself? The Quran confirmed that Jesus healed all kind of illness. All kind of illness. If we go in the Quran, we will find this.
Um, in chapter 3, verse number 49, it says the following. That Jesus, he did all those miracles, including creating a figure of a clay, and then he breathed into it, and then the clay would became a living bird. As you see, he breathed, I breathed, and breathed into it. Jesus, from the breath, from the breath of Jesus, life is given. Not the breed of Allah. It is Jesus, according to the Quran. He breathed into it. How you can do that? What do you mean by you breathe? You see, here if Jesus, he made the figure of a mud, and he says, please Allah, please make him alive, that will make it miracle of Allah, and the miracle of Jesus. The Muslim, they said to you, it says there, by the leave of Allah, but this will not make any difference. It was Jesus who breathed into it. This is your claim that this is by the leave of Allah. If we have a high building built like 200 floor, you Muslim can claim that this is by the leave of Allah. Who care? But the fact this is not by the leave of Allah, this is by having license from the city and getting company qualified to build such a building. You can claim whatever you want. You can claim that we went all the way to the moon by the leave of Allah, but this is not the fact. The fact is that there are scientists who were able to study and make it happen. What leave of Allah? However, don't forget the Quran says Allah He challenged all the all man, man and jinn to go out of the zone of the earth. And you could not. Why? Because simply Allah will not allow you to get out without permission, and the permission only granted for the good believers and the Prophet specifically. You see, like we try to talk about one topic, but topic, you know, make us go into other topic, etc. And actually, this is fine because you know, uh, this way uh, uh, there's things usually maybe I don't say or I'd not say for for a while. Uh, it reminds you uh, of things maybe, uh, especially if you are new here, you did not hear me speaking before, etc. Let us see the verse. <clears throat> oh, this website is really. Mm. Let us see. Ya ma'ashar al jinni wal ins. In istata'tum an tamfudu min aqtari al-samawati wal ard okay what does that mean really carefully chapter 55 verse number 33 you know what let us save our time and read the interpretation so the muslim they want to say is giving you false interpretation 55 33 Oh, company of jinns. Jinn, by the way, Muslim believe in genie. Some naive Christians, doesn't matter how many times we repeat for them, they still think that genie are demon. Muslim do not believe in demons. Muslim believe in genie. And genie is not a spirit. Genie is a creature who have a body, he have a penis, he have an ass, he have a belly, he have a stomach, and even he can have sex with Muslim women. So please, Christians, stop copying words from the Muslims and applying it in your book we have nothing to share genie are not demon now oh company of the jinn and the humans if you are able to to pass through the exist and confines of the region of the heaven and the earth then pass though through okay a commandment challenge to them to what they are incapable of doing Allah is a challenge in you to go out of the earth you are incapable well isn't it this is enough to prove that Muhammad is a scam
you will not be able to pass unless Allah allow you okay but he is a challenge in him at the same time to do so he is not saying I will give you the power if you read more interpretation you will see that this is only granted for prophets like Muhammad he went to the 7 11 heaven in a top of a flying mule beautiful mule Oh, company of the jinn, and if you have a power, if you have a power, if you are able to penetrate all to break free from the regions of, of the heaven and the earth, okay, go and do it. Huh? Then break free and flee. Can you? Can you break free and flee? Allah challenging you. You will never do so. Do you see it? You will never. You will not be able to break free. Save with the person and proof. Who is this one? Read more interpretation, you will see it is Muhammad or uh, Isa, not you and me. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I see someone saying I'm wrong. Wrong about what, my friend? There's a Muslim saying I'm wrong. Guys, I'm, I'm reading to you what is in the front of me. I, I didn't say anything from my own. Everything I say is coming from your books as you see. This is your official... Okay, you know, hold on. You know what? I will, I will try to spoil you. I will try to spoil you. Chapter 55, verse number 33. What about we go to Ibn Kathir? What do you think? 55, 33. Hmm. Just to make you happy, my friend. We showed you Ajilani, we showed you Ibn Abbas. Okay. Let us show you someone else. <clears throat> Read with me carefully, please. O assembly of jinn and men, if you are able to pass beyond the zones of the heaven and the earth, pass beyond them, but you will never be able to pass them except with authority from Allah. Meaning, you will never be able to escape Allah orders and decrees because it's composed wherever you between you know you are under his command and you cannot get out. You will never be able to avoid a word of his rule and judgment over you. And then he says. Illa bi Sultan, which with authority meaning except with the approval of Allah. Okay, what does that mean? You, where is your refuge to flee? Can you? You cannot flee. All right. And then he continue. And then the Quran says something more stupid. I wish Muhammad stopped there, but he don't. The more he speak, the more he do poo poo. He says, if you try to go out of the earth, what Allah will do to you? Allah will shoot your ass with a flying fire from Cooper. If we go in the Quran, we will find this. Why Allah did not show the ass of the communists when they went to the moon or the space? Okay. What is that? Same chapter, chapter 55, verse number 33. So if you try to escape the zone of the earth, if you try, just try. What Allah will do? Allah will shoot you in the ass. Oh, company of the jinn, however powerful, not the same, you know, here we go. They will send against you both fire, flesh of a brass, and you will not escape. Isn't it this is enough to prove that Islam is a fiction? Isn't it enough this is for anyone who have a little brain that Allah is a liar? Does that exist? This is Muhammad. Muhammad never come to his mind that time will come and a human being will be able to go to the space. 
He can lie about a flying carpet, a flying mule, blah, blah, blah. But you never imagine this why he is making a very confirmed challenge that you cannot pass. And hold on. If you try to pass, Allah will shoot your ass with the flame of fire. Actually, Muhammad, he say that more and more and more verses in the Quran. Uh, if you read here as an example, it says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ Okay, what does that mean? What is the purpose of having stars? Stars. There's two purpose. Chapter 67, verse number 5. The first purpose is a decoration. And we have a from... Uh, 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 adorned in the lowest heaven with lamps and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones so here we go we showed you how Allah challenged you to go out of the earth and you are obviously evil for trying to do that but if you try to do so Allah will shoot you by a star you will shoot a little tiny genie or a human by a star before he leave the earth, that's impossible. The only way to do it is to destroy the whole earth because the star is so big. And as you see here, it says, we decorated the lowest heaven with the stars, lamps. Muhammad, he thought, for he is illiterate in intelligence, and in stupidity is covering him, is showering him. He thought when you see a meteor coming down from the space, that is a star where Allah, he hit the one who tried to escape. And now he put that in his Quran. Any Muslim have an, ex an objection? If you don't believe that this is the true meaning of what I'm saying, we can go and see the interpretation, chapter 67, verse number 5. And verily we beautify the world with the heaven, with the first heaven, with lamps, with the stars. And we have made them, i.e., the stars, missiles for the devils, such that some of them become bewitched and some are killed, with others are burnt. What? And for them, for the devils, we have prepared the hell after. What, 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 what is that? This is what, this is what Islam did. And the Muslim, they say to you, Islam, Quran, and science. And they say to you, the Quran is a miracle itself. And it's very funny for many reasons how the same verse in the Quran says Allah refrain from sending a miracle and the Quran itself is a miracle. He just said refrain. If the Quran is a miracle, you should not say we refrain because by saying that sentence itself, by saying we refrain, you are making a miracle. <laughs> it's like somebody, he is sitting in the toilet seat doing his poo poo and he say we refrain from doing poo poo. But you are doing poo poo. At the moment you are doing it. There is a Muslim trying to call me. Uh, no, my, my Skype is not on really. My Skype is off. Uh, I, will, I will not take calls unless I go back to the state because I don't have really uh, equipment for, you know, to transform the sound of the Skype. Uh, and the other day we did it in uh, 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 with brother Amir, you know. But for now, I have just a little tablet I'm using for broadcast and a little phone to read the chat. Uh, but as you see, this is a very funny, very stupid religion. And the Muslim speaking of miracle, this is a miracle. This is a miracle of stupidity. That 1.5 billion, as Muslims claim to be, Believe in such a garbage. 
that God will shoot the ass of shaitan with a star and shaitan he live in the earth is so small even Muhammad he tied one of the so shaitan to the column of the mosque Muhammad he said that shaitan he sleep in the nose of the Muslim so you can imagine how small he is so he's so small to the point he sleep in your nose and you don't even feel him which means even a mosquito goes inside your nose you will go crazy you will feel it right away and it's going to be very annoying if not dangerous how shaitan sleep in my nose and then you are going to use star to shoot shaitan who is smaller than a little tiny mosquito to make it simple all those who claim that Muhammad have miracles they are going against the Quran the Quran confirm clearly that Muhammad has no miracles in the top of that the Quran confirm that it's a book made by someone is so ignorant someone he do not know neither the past neither the future someone he think that Mitor is God shooting real star at a little tiny devil in the size of less of a mosquito. Someone believe that God he created the man from a sperm and that the sperm stay in the belly of his mother for forty days. Someone believe that the sperm is something something coming from women and men, as we see. In chapter 86 verse number six and seven which is amazingly proven to us again and again that Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God how in the world can you believe in such a garbage women have a sperm and the sperm coming from her ribs if you read verse number six and seven that gushing fluid issued from between the loins of the man the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women this is God talking. God saying that man, his sperm coming from the back backbone, and women have a sperm coming from the ribs. I never heard that women have a sperm since when? Since Allah is a stupid. Since Muhammad is a false prophet. Since the Abdul are going crazy. We do not need to be genius or to be so smart to know right away that this is a book written by an idiot officially. He called himself a prophet, but self acclaimed prophet who made the prophecies come to be not a true. And there's many tons of his stories written long after Muhammad. They are not exist in the Quran and they are fabricated of Muslims to speak of miracles. Because if miracles of Muhammad are cannot cannot be found in the Quran, and the miracle of Jesus can be found in the Quran, and the miracle of Moses can be found in the Quran, and the miracles of many prophets according to the Quran are there, why the prophet of Islam, the founder of this cult, his miracles is the last to be found there. No answer except that all is a fabrication stories written long after Muhammad about Muhammad and this is what we find here guys priors immediately answered prior of Muhammad immediately answer prior of Muhammad immediately answer are you sure <laughs> Oh Lord have mercy. All right, let us see. Let us see if the prayer of Muhammad is immediately answered from the Quran. Oh. I will type only one word. Hmm? I just type maybe in Arabic. All of those. Is about maybe all those verses 
Allah saying maybe. As an example, chapter 7, verse number 129. Muhammad is not sure if he will win against his enemies or not. So, what Allah says to him according to Muhammad, maybe. Maybe? Why? They said, we have had nothing but a trouble before it, you know, it's okay. Huh. Then he says, it may be that your Lord will destroy your enemy. Who is talking here, Allah? What does that mean? Where is the guy who Allah answered his prayer immediately? Did Muhammad, didn't Muhammad, he pray to Allah for victory? I can show you tons of hadith, Muhammad praying for Allah. Before every attack, they pray for Allah. They pray for Allah, even in the one they lost. But Allah says, maybe. So how that can be? And we can show tons of verses like this about maybe. All those verses contain the word maybe. Maybe Allah will forgive them. Allah saying maybe Allah will forgive them. Why? You don't know the future? Hmm? Oh, look, look at this. Hmm. Chapter 17, verse number 8. It may be that your Lord may yet show mercy unto you. Or if you remember, just to make it simple, if you remember the story where Adam, he said to Allah, you made me make evil or do evil. You remember? You made me do evil. Where is the thing? Let us see. Here we go. They said, our Lord, have we wronged ourselves if you forgive us? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then he continued. Adam received word from his Lord. Adam said, oh, Lord, didn't you create me with your own hands? He said, yes. He said, and blow life into me. He said, yes. And when I sneezed, you said, may Allah grant you his mercy? <laughs> Allah said, may Allah grant you his mercy? Are you crazy? How he is Allah, and then he says, may Allah grant you his mercy. That's that's the most stupid statement ever. The one is talking is Allah. Allah, he said to Adam, may Allah grant you his being and mercy? Right? As you see, this book cannot stand little, little tiny examination. It's a stupid in every word, every mean. Not only Allah never answered Muhammad prayer, even Allah did not even keep, was able to keep his words. When Allah, he said that 100 of you can win against 200. Sorry, 100 can win against 1,000. Allah could not keep his words and the Muslim they were disappointed of Allah. And then Allah, he had to change the numbers because he cannot keep his promise. Chapter 8, verse number 65 and 66, it says, O Prophet, rose the believer to fight. If there is 20 amongst you, patient and preserving, they will vanquish 200. If 100, they will vanquish 1,000. Okay. The poor people they went to war and they've been screwed so allah have to change the number so he said oh for now allah enlighten your task because he find a weakness spot in you so if there is a hundred of you patient and preserving they will vanquish 200 so from from one fighting 10 and they will win to one fighting two and they will win what prayer are you talking about if Allah is a true God, if he say one will fight a billion, he will win. That's it. He will win. He's God. 
if God is in my side, who is going to be against me? This is what the Bible said. If God is with me, who could be against me? And here we are talking about the real war, not the metaphorical meaning. To the point he is even giving the numbers of the soldiers will fight in the in this fight. And what is required? One can fight against ten. One hundred can fight one thousand. Allah could not keep it. He had to change because Muhammad obviously he noticed that he is exaggerating too much to the point it does not make sense and is stupid. So he said, Oh Allah, now he found that you have a weakness. So we are going to change the numbers. One can fight two. One can fight two. Now, guys, I scheduled another broadcast uh, in a few hours from now, maybe around like four hours from now, four hours, uh, maybe 10 minutes, something like this. Uh, I would do my best to do it. I schedule it already, you know, because as I said, if I have like a, a, a quiet uh, a space to do that, I would do so. If not, then I will rechange the date maybe for tomorrow, just to let you know. So in four hours from now, about four hours from now, I will do my best to do the broadcast. But if many people show up and many people, they are going to be around and a lot of noise, I will not be able to do it. So. Uh, I want to say I will stop here in the moment and we will continue in four hours from now and the topic in four hours is going to be totally different. It's going to be about temptation of Allah, how he tempted the Muslims by women, sex, money, etc. And how it worked and how the belief of Islam worked regarding this. It's going to be a very important topic and most of the topic I do is an answer for you, for those who send me request and I apologize I cannot do all the request you know I cannot you know like I can do one at the time and if you see my my the text message I receive you will, you will not believe it you know I open Skype I find like 100 missing call uh, 50 texts if not more and same as email same etc so it's a lot of people asking and one man doing so I apologize if I could not do everything you guys are asking for, but you are not forgetting when I can. If the topic has already been talking about, then please search for the video before. If not, I don't mind to make a video for sure, because this is what I love to do, to explain to people, to show them the truth, and the truth will set you free. By the wisdom of the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord, we fight every ignorance, not the wisdom of the man. Me as a man, I speak no wisdom but what God gave me as a gift and the gift is that God he ordered me to read the books starting from the Bible is ending with the evil ones so we can fight the devil better we study diseases not because we love diseases but because we need to fight diseases when a scientist or a doctor he study cancer not because he like cancer but he cannot fight it unless you know what cancer is so this is exactly what we do. We are trying to help the Muslims. We are not against the Muslims. The Muslims are not my enemies. I hate no one. I will never hurt a Muslim. And I will do always my best to be a Christian or a Christian person who love everybody. And the second I feel I'm going away from this target, then I will not really even open my mouth because then obviously it's not the Lord speaking within my tongue. God is about love and he teach people to love each other when Muhammad he taught his followers to kill the Christians the Jews the Hindus everybody obviously this is not from God God is all about love and here love I don't want to abuse it because some people some Christians they abuse the word love loving someone does not mean you don't tell him the truth and you don't hurt his feeling loving someone it doesn't mean your son is taking drugs and you say to him it's okay to take drugs because you're afraid to offend him loving someone is you saying things as it is as it is with no makeup black and white don't put makeup if you do so you are a hypocrite person you are no Christian don't speak to a Muslim say to him I respect your prophet I don't respect his prophet don't say to a Muslim I respect your religion I don't respect his religion how I can respect someone he beat his wife and say, this is your religion, I respect it. That's me, I'm respecting the man beating his wife. I'm respecting the teaching of beating wives. 
how I can respect someone teach his followers to have sex with the children that mean I respect the child molesters that mean I respect the devil himself so don't be hypocrite if you do so you are no Christian say it as it is whoever like to take it take it the one who don't want it let him go I do my best to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth may the Lord bless you all and see you again in a few hours from now if I could as I say be with us share the link with everybody Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again bye-bye